This is Charlie Milburn for Hit Exchange Media. I'm joined by Hit Exchange Executive Editor Eric Hibbs via video link. Recently, Eric had the opportunity to visit IBM, where Dr. Zhang Ying Hu talked about her work. Welcome, Eric. Thank you, Charlie. So, what did Dr. Zhang Ying Hu talk about? Well, Dr. Hu is a research staff member at IBM. She talked about her team's contributions in developing a suite of analytic tools for healthcare. Thanks, Eric. Here's some of the footage of Dr. Hu talking about her work. We have been developing um, a suite of analytics that's uh, designed to provide uh, data-driven decision support for intelligent uh, uh, care delivery. And uh, the main theme behind this uh, stream of analytics work is to develop methodologies that can be used to derive insight from healthcare data collected from multiple sources through the normal course of care delivery and uh, to use that insight to, dis to support uh, personalized decision making for both care delivery and care management. Uh, and one of the key components behind these uh, analytics is what we call patient similarity analytics. And the idea there is, is to develop methodologies that can help you identify patients that are similar to uh, a patient of interest, which we call index patient, in a clinically meaningful way so that the longitudinal records uh, retrieved from these similar patients can be used to derive insights that are particularly relevant for the patient of interest. Um, and so that uh, the doctors or medical directors can then look at what treatment was given to these similar patients, what procedures, uh, what uh, uh, um, care management uh, programs were provided, and what kind of outcomes were derived so that they can make uh, the decision regarding what is the best course of action for the patient of interest. Uh, we have been doing this using uh, data collected from a uh, network of primary care providers that uh, covers 200,000 patients and we use data collected over a course of three years and the data includes uh, claims data which has diagnosis and uh, procedures uh, uh, and other information about the patient encounters and we have also uh, had access to lab data as well as pharmacy data for those three years. So as you would expect, data collected through normal course of uh, delivery tend to be very noisy. So there's a lot of effort involved in cleaning the data and also uh, mapping data to the right uh, level of, uh, of uh, uh, abstraction to be uh, amicable to, for application. For example, for diagnosis, instead of just using ICD-9 codes as is, we map them to various different hierarchies. For example, one hierarchy we use is the CCS hierarchy provided by AHRQ, so that you can map diseases to higher levels of uh, uh, categories, so that if two even if two patients have uh, uh, diagnosis with different ICD-9 code, but if you follow the hierarchy and see that these two are actually related diseases, you would still be able to capture that similarity. So there's a lot of not just cleaning, but also data mapping involved before analytics can be done. The idea is this kind of analytics should uh, be very valuable for multiple players in the healthcare system, right? It can be for uh, providers at a point of care, this can help them determine uh, for the patient that they're looking at, maybe it's a specifically complicated patient, what is the best course of action because typically the published uh, uh, clinical practice guidelines tend to be uh, targeted towards the average patient and in real world settings you very often would encounter very complex patients that doesn't necessarily fall into the predetermined categories in a clean way. So this notion of patient similarity basically helps the provider to reach into a collective memory, if you will, instead of just their own experience, so that you can, they can derive insight from this larger patient pool and, and get more similar ca cases so that they can derive more insight that can help them make decisions about the patient. Now for medical directors, they can look at the patients in their uh, delivery network, identify the challenging patients and similarly review them and compare them against similar patients to see if they are getting the proper care, if they're getting the uh, good outcome by comparing to the similar patients and identify those patients if a particular index patient is not getting as good at an outcome as other patients who are similar to this patient, then they might want to look into it to see what is it in the care process that's not serving the patient well enough and what needs to be adjusted. 
this, this notion of patient similarity really can support many different uh, um, analytics components. And one of this, these components is, as you uh, mentioned, is this personalized patient-physician matching. The notion is if you have a patient with a particular condition uh, and uh, you are targeting a particular outcome in, 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 uh, in, uh, in a particular that's really important for this patient, you want to find out which one of the available specialists or primary care physicians would be the best person to manage this patient to achieve this particular outcome, right? So we have developed a uh, predictive model which basically looks at uh, the patients for all the providers that are available, uh, what patients they uh, took care of in the past, and out of these patients, which ones received good outcome, which ones received a suboptimal outcome, uh, outcome, uh, and then compare the index patient to these past patients to see whether the index patient is more similar to the patients that received good outcome or more similar to the patients that received uh, suboptimal out outcome so that we can determine what is the likelihood of each particular provider uh, of providing a good outcome for this specific patient. So in this setting, uh, what we're doing is not to try to evaluate providers in general, meaning who is a better provider who is a, uh, than, than other providers. Instead, what we're trying to do is to really uh, have a model to identify which providers are particularly good at managing patients of what particular type. So this is really very much a personalized uh, matching of identifying the best provider for specific patients with specific conditions. The ultimately, uh, you know, when you improve care quality, the patients do better. They will end up utilizing the system less than you will end up reducing cost, right? So basically, any kind of analytics that can be used to improve care quality will eventually reduce cost. And, and so the cost benefit is essentially in reducing uh, avoidable complications, in identifying the better treatments so that the uh, patients would recover faster or stay in a better condition longer period of time. So they end up using the, uh, the healthcare system less, therefore reducing the cost. Particularly for the uh, uh, accountable care organizations, right? These are typically networks of providers getting together and they will have access to this a large amount of data that's needed for this type of analytics and, and uh, they should be able to uh, make use of this a large amount of data and derive the kind of insights that I just described that can be used both to improve uh, quality of care at point of, uh, at, at point of care but also on the management side, the medical directors when they design incentive uh, programs, when they design uh, uh, resource allocation among their networked uh, providers, right? So this type of intelligence in terms of uh, what's the better, uh, how do you uh, uh, identify patients to apply the right disease management programs to them? How do you provide personalized matching between uh, patients and physicians? And also how do you evaluate providers' performance based on this type of comparison among similar patients? Uh, in terms of outcome would really provide very useful insight on the management side as well. Predictive modeling is another uh, component that, that we are working on. So the, the idea being to be able to identify, predict the onset of a serious condition far ahead um, uh, of, of, of the expected onset, right? So six months, uh, 12 months, so that appropriate intervention steps can be taken to either delay or uh, in some cases even uh, invert the, the onset of, of such conditions. That's also part of uh, our package. All the, these analytics that I have developed, uh, that I have described, uh, have been, have gone through basically uh, proof of concept studies using real world data. Uh, as I just mentioned, we had data from uh, basically covering 200,000 patients over a three year period. So all these algorithms have been tested on this real world data to demonstrate the effectiveness. Uh, but the next step, uh, which is what we are working on right now, is to identify the right partner in the healthcare industry, be it uh, uh, large providers, networks of providers or payers or ACOs to really uh, apply these uh, algorithms, these uh, systems and technologies in the operational setting and to harden it in that context so that then we can really make that into a, uh, a solution that can be uh, offered to the mass market.
There are a lot of uh, other uh, algorithms that we are working on. So one, one uh, example is utilization analysis, where we look at a population of patients and we characterize each patient uh, using what we call a utilization profile, which basically looks at uh, the, the, the amount of utilization of the patient over a given period, for example, in terms of number of visits to primary care physicians, number of visits to specialists, number of visits uh, to in-hospital care, outpatient out, uh, hospital care, et cetera, emergency room visits. Uh, once you have this type of characterization of patients, you can then apply uh, clustering analysis to identify uh, the dominant clusters within your population of patients with similar utilization patterns. These then uh, become the dominant utilization patterns of your population, so this information can then be used to guide your care process design, get your resource uh, allocation and planning. It can also be used to uh, perform uh, detection of unexpected utilization in the context of the patient's conditions. So for each one of these, uh, for patients belonging to each one of these utilization groups, what we can do is then to develop clinical models that captures the underlying clinical characteristics and demographic characteristics that lead to that particular type of utilization. Once we have such models, then for each patient we can predict the expected utilization pattern given the patient's uh, clinical characteristics as well as demographic characteristics. And then we can compare the expected utilization against the actual utilization to see whether this patient's actual utilization uh, is in line with what's expected. And if, if it's different, then the, uh, the care delivery organization would want to look into it, this to identify what is the underlying reason. It could be unauthorized, uh, unjustifiable overutilization, but in some cases it could be either under overutilization, but eventually leads to the identification of new best practices that has not been uh, uh, prevalent practice.